inexplicable, enigmatic, still-surviving ancient Uparts. Named after their academically claimed creators, the Kachari Ruins, a set of large and incredibly heavy relics whose purpose, or indeed true age, remains a largely ignored area of study by any individual who depends on institutional funding for their career survival. Yet there are many other ancient sites which litter modern-day India, whom have an equally enigmatic history. Some of these sites we have covered in the past, like that of Kailash Temple, a remarkable ancient achievement carved directly from a bedrock of Earth with such artistic vision and accuracy that any logical explanation for its creation remains a challenging and still elusive reality surrounding not only the many sites we have already covered, but countless others which still lay either undiscovered or deliberately ignored by mainstream media. Yet our next area of interest has encountered a polar experience, having been officially acknowledged as one of India's most important of ancient sites. Known as the Udiagri Caves, they are a set of 20 rock-cut caves near Vidisha, Madhya Pradesh, and according to mainstream historians, dates from the early years of the 5th century. We have often postulated that some ancient religions, having survived the test of time, and we have often encountered Buddhist or Hindu belief systems engraved upon currently inexplicable stone carvings and ancient structures, which we feel are indicative of a lost civilization's advanced capabilities. Cave 5, in particular, possesses depictions of ancient reptilian creatures, later attributed to ancient religious systems. Yet the original inspiration for these carvings is an ongoing mystery, and whether inspired by religious beliefs or possible real events, is an ongoing mystery that mainstream academics continue to stifle the legitimacy and mainstream adoption of. Claimed as that of Vishnu, this depiction of a giant reptile consuming comparatively tiny human figures is a depiction which is undoubtedly of great historical importance. Yet we hypothesize that only a small portion of existing human history has ever been explored in detail, or indeed permitted to be a mainstream possibility. Odiagri literally means the Sunrise Mountain, and is, interestingly, not the only ancient site with this name located within modern-day India. Odiagri Wazi was a Buddhist and Bhagavad Gita site by the 2nd century, as evidenced by the Heliodorus Pillar. Yet this inhabitation is possibly merely the adoption of a surviving structure. Additionally, while the Heliodorus Pillar has supposedly been preserved without damage, many other similar sites are all but dilapidated ruins, possibly suggesting that this claim of creation is in reality a hoax. And while Buddhism was prominent in Sanchi near Uriyagari in the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, it is highly possible that the religious teachings date from a lost period of ancient history. According to Das and Willis, recent archaeological evidence, such as the Uriyagari lion capital, suggests that there was a sun temple at Uriyagari. The Surya tradition in Uriyagari dates from at least the 2nd century, and possibly one that predated the arrival of Buddhism. It is this tradition that gives it the Sunrise Mountain name and we feel is yet more supportive evidence in defense of the channel's postulations. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Mancha. When did they build it? Located upon a hill 600 meters above the Adriatic Sea in Albania, Amantia and its port Oricum are mentioned for the first time by pseudo Silax in 330 BC. Yet there are specific features of this fascinating fortress, which is indicative of a now lost civilization. Polygonal masonry, advanced megalithic archways, among other ancient anomalies, litter the site, just like that of Delphi located within Greece. Recognized as Greeks by the Theroradokai of Delphi, the inhabitants were allowed to take part in the Delphic competitions. The true builders of the original site, however, remains unknown. The massive, once impenetrable walls were built before the end of the 4th century BC, and literary sources report them as an Illyrium rather than Epiroti or Macedonian foundation. 
However, any explanation as to how these ruins were constructed remains absent. Several monuments at the site still survive to this day. The fortified polygonal walls measured at over two kilometers long, a gated entrance, a temple now attributed to the Greek god Aphrodite, and several tombs in the northeastern necropolis. Additionally, like many other areas claimed as the work of the Greek Empire, an impressive stadium also still remains, built east of the ancient city on a natural terrace. Clearly indicative of a tremendous age, any unexplained architecture attached to the stadium, however, has now been lost. But the site of Delphi, the focus of later inhabitants' devotion, still possesses a polygonal floor. One of the reasons for the construction of the site, and indeed what we believe was a later re-inhabitation of its geographically strategic position. Amantia occupied an important defensive position above the Alus River Valley to the east and overlooked an ancient route to the coast and Bay of Alon. Although, like many other sites in the area, they are claimed as Grecian relics, any explanation as to how these feats were achieved remains unexplained. Thus, we feel any continued attribution to a known ancestor can be argued as inaccurate. It is a site which we find highly compelling. During our own in-depth, long-term investigations into the possibility of our small planet once being home to possibly multiple developed civilizations, each met cataclysm, thus each lost civilizations, as far as mainstream academia would accept, civilizations far more advanced than will ever be academically shared, never even considering the possibility that one was indeed once responsible for the many inexplicably precise yet enormous ancient ruins found all over the world. We recently did an expose regarding the Bazda Caves. Located within Turkey, we cover the many ancient tool marks present within the caves. It was an ideal place for us to launch a pursuit into whether we could identify multiple lost civilizations. We pursued the identification of signature features within and amongst the many enigmatic stone-cut scars left by ancient technologies once used to create these incredible sites. In doing so, we identified a signature within the block building of one specific civilization, whose ruins dot Greece, Egypt, and far beyond, whose signature also present at this circular mound. Discovered by mainstream archaeologists a while ago, yet regardless Greece's culture ministry, warning against overboard speculation that an ancient artificial mound being excavated could contain a royal Macedonian grave, or even Alexander the Great, the mainstream awareness of the site, it seems, was successfully suppressed. Regardless, due to our own independent investigations into a civilization, who once constructed a number of ruins still unexplained, identifying their signature present at the site, it is unquestionably an ancient structure of a now lost and suppressed civilization. Now known as the Casta Tomb, it was, intriguingly, adorned with a pair of sphinxes whose heads are missing. Alas, we have previously addressed this mass destruction, with many other sphinx heads destroyed, in an effort to suppress Anubis as its true identity, and the sphinx's true canine origins. Yet alas, the main stonework is the smoking god. The compounding factors indicating that this site was once built even quite possibly by the great pyramid builders due to the addition of sphinxes, yet it has been successfully stifled from mainstream view. These headless sphinxes, clearly of a canine nature, and as we have previously postulated in regards to the great sphinx of Giza, was in fact once depicted as the head of Anubis and the water erosion theory a convolution in an effort to hide the fact that the Great Sphinx once rested within a great lake, namely Anubis Lake. Yet, I digress. The circular structure within Greece may have indeed once been built by this same, once inexplicably advanced ancient civilization. Yet alas, any academic study 
funded by mainstream institutions, will never accept or even consider the possibility of any advanced civilization, regardless of the precision evident in their stonework, once anywhere as close, or even more advanced than us today, ever having existed. This advanced yet most likely claimed as Greek ruin may have indeed been used by said characters, as their tombs as claimed. Unfortunately, however, said tomb is also often claimed as their handiwork as well, regardless of the inexplicable features present upon all these sites. Whether claimed as Greek or Roman, the size and indeed precision of some of the blocks often present are far out of their capabilities. Yet these mainstream conspiracy theories remain the status quo, regardless of said evidence. It is a system of denial and process, and we think, for good reason, although argued as the burial site of Alexander the Great, the signature features never lie, allowing us, no matter how controversial, to date this relic to a forgotten time within history. It is a debate and a sight which we find highly compelling. The toppled obelisk of Axum within Ethiopia is not only one of the largest ancient megaliths on our planet, but indeed a rare surviving wonder of the ancient world. Estimated at well over 1,000 tons, it was mysteriously toppled sometime in history, destroyed like so many other enormous relics of a lost antiquity, possibly during a cataclysmic event, and its resulting earthquakes. Yet, regardless, this gigantic ancient monument was once quarried, transported, and then somehow erected at the foot of where it now lay. Among the many other smaller obelisks, all curiously still standing monuments. The site is in addition to the megalith, covered in false windows. Now we feel a feature which can be used as overwhelming proof that the builders of said site were not only in contact intercontinental, but in cooperation in regard to construction and stone-cutting technologies. Not only do the tunnel systems, claimed as tombs within the Axum site, possess polygonal masonry, an additional, now lost technology, yet also found intercontinentally within ancient sites around the globe. Furthermore, however, we can add another chapter to this proof of a once existing, now lost, but once highly capable and thus highly advanced ancient worldwide civilization, having once been responsible for the 1,000 plus ton megalithic sites around the world. Metal Clamps Another subject we have covered comprehensively linking to many sites, which according to modern paradigm were geographically impossible to have been in contact, even during the dates they themselves pin on them. These metal clamp seats were initially cut into the huge stones at strategic positions. Then molten metal, often enigmatic and advanced in metallurgy, were poured into these cuts to pin the stones together preventing them from slipping over time, retaining their perfect alignment. How can we continue to believe that the evidence for our argument be ignored, dismissed as conspiracy, the hypothesis refused serious investigation? 
We find this highly compelling.